Hello, my name is Beth Beam and I'm the coordinator for the HEROES project from UNMC's College of Nursing. In this video, we'll be reviewing the basic concepts of triage. Triage is a French word which means to sort. It's used in emergency situations when there are more victims than rescuers. Usually in such situations, resources are limited, so the goal is to do the greatest good for the greatest number. In an emergency situation, it's important to stop, look, listen, and think. Sometimes this is the hardest thing to do. You should begin by identifying yourself and then conduct voice triage. For example, say, I am Beth with the Medical Reserve Corps. If you can walk, come to the sound of my voice. You should assign someone to tag those who respond to the voice triage. Remember that even walking patients can be critically hurt. You should then evaluate each remaining victim and tag them, systematically evaluating the scene. A triage tag can be a simple colored strip of plastic to denote the category for the victim, or a complicated card such as this one with many barcodes and data fields. This card becomes part of the patient's medical record. Once a color is selected, the responder keeps one tab of the color they choose and leaves the other tab to designate the status of the victim. You can see this tag includes a pink strip for contamination. This is used when chemicals are involved. It is removed after the victim has been properly decontaminated. There are four common classifications for triage tags. The first group is minor and is often noted as green. This group has injuries which can be treated with basic first aid. The second group is delayed and is usually designated as yellow. This group has injuries requiring medical treatment, but they are not life-threatening. The third group is immediate and is often noted as red. This group has life-threatening injuries which require rapid treatment. The last group is deceased and is often designated as black. This group is not spontaneously breathing so they are considered dead unless additional resources arrive. The first step in triage is to open the airway and check for breathing. This is a simple count of breaths per minute. More than 30 breaths per minute indicate shock. These victims should be tagged immediate and treated for shock. If the victim is breathing less than 30 per minute, you can move on to step two. If there are no breaths after two attempts to open the airway, this indicates death and the victim will be tagged black. Step two is to check for circulation and bleeding. Circulation is measured using the Blanche test or what in the hospital setting is sometimes called capillary refill. This is done by simply applying pressure to the nail bed and counting the time it takes for color to return. If normal color takes more than two seconds to return, the victim is tagged immediate. In a situation where a victim has severe bleeding, we need to get it under control by applying pressure to obvious wounds. Pressure in the brachial or femoral area may be needed to slow the bleeding of a wound. When working in a situation like this, standard precautions such as hand sanitizer and gloves should be used by the triage team when available. The last triage step is to check mental status. This is done by using a simple command such as squeeze my hand or wiggle your toes. Questions like what is today's date may be too complicated for someone who has just experienced a traumatic situation. If the victim does not respond, treat them for shock and tag them immediate. If the victim passes all tests, tag them as delayed. If the victim fails one test, tag them immediate. Immediate victims require three interventions. Make sure each victim in the scene gets a tag. The interventions for an immediate victim include airway control, bleeding control, and treatment for shock. Airway is managed with the head tilt chin lift maneuver. Bleeding may require direct pressure, elevation of a wound above the heart, and the use of pressure points at the brachial or femoral artery. The treatment for shock in this setting is to lay the person on their back with their feet elevated and airway open. Bleeding should be controlled. Monitor body temperature with a blanket or clothing. Even on a warm day, the person may be chilled. 
In order to get a better idea of how this works in practice, let's take a look at some examples demonstrated during a simulated triage event. There are two triage teams active in this scenario. The yellow team begins by announcing who they are and, if you can walk, come to the sound of my voice. They then begin to triage those who come forward. The green team heads out amongst the remaining people. The first casualty has respirations of 32 per minute, a capillary refill time of 3 seconds, and her mental status is that she is able to follow commands but is agitated. She is tagged as immediate. The second victim has been evaluated to have respirations of zero, there is no response to capillary refill, and shows no response to mental status questions. She should be tagged as deceased. The third person has respirations of 20 per minute, a capillary refill time of less than 3 seconds, and is asking if she can help in any way. She is tagged as minor. Finally, the last casualty has respirations of 28 per minute, a capillary refill time of less than 3 seconds, and her mental status is that she is able to follow directions. She is tagged as delayed. Triage is a challenging task. Time and resources are limited, so it's okay to recruit help from survivors who are able. Feeling useful may help them to cope with the situation. Try to avoid the pitfalls of triage, which include poor planning, indecisive leadership, narrow focus, and the desire to render more extensive treatment. This is only a framework for sorting patients. Individual event characteristics and resources available may alter the triaging of victims.